Howdy folks, we are continuing the Manhattan journey today. I got a fun variation called the Red Hook. I got a couple of vermouths to try out in the drink. I've also got a variation on the variation. It's gonna be a fun one, let's go. Okay, so the Red Hook is a variation on the Manhattan from Milk and Honey bartender Enzo Erico. And interestingly, it's pretty close actually to my current Manhattan build. It is rye, uh, vermouth, and maraschino. Uh, it doesn't have bitters though. It instead uses punta mess. Now, punta mess means point and a half, and basically it's one part or one point vermouth and a half point of, uh, of Amaro. It's basically like a sweet vermouth, but you shouldn't substitute Punta Mess straight for sweet vermouth because it does have this extra Amaro bitter element and it's a, a bit drier than sweet vermouth. Now in the Red Hook, the Punta Mess is taking the place of the bitters uh, and the sweet vermouth, and then you add in some maraschino to um, add a little bit more extra sweetness. So it'll be interesting to see if the maraschino is enough to counteract the extra bitterness from the vermouth. By the way, Punta Mess is made by Branca, uh, as in Fernet Branca, who also make Carpano Antica, FYI. Now I also have another uh, sort of extra bitter sweet vermouth that might work in this cocktail called Coqui Dopo Teatro. They call it a vermouth amaro. It's basically amaro with uh, extra bittering agents, you know, uh, amaro-like elements added into it, including rhubarb, uh, chiretta flowers and quinine. So I'm thinking this should be pretty much like a Punta Mess substitute. And apparently they call it Dopo Teatro because you're supposed to drink it after you go to the theater. Dopo Teatro, very classy. Now, before we get to making red hooks, I thought we would just taste through the sweet vermouths. I think it's important to taste vermouths, especially on their own every so often, just to remind yourself what they taste like so that when if you're making up a cocktail, you'll have a better notion of what might work where. So let's taste Punta Mesa and Dopo Teatro. Also, you know what else? I'm gonna throw in the regular Coqui Torino because um, that seems like it might be a good reference point for the other the other Coqui. In fact, let's just start with that right now. This is Coqui de Torino. In my in my mind, in my memory, it has sort of a, a chocolatey um, a chocolatey flavor. Fairly sweet. A light bitterness and yeah, like um, like a light chocolatey flavor. This can add a, like a slight chocolatey note to certain drinks, which is pretty neat. All right, let's move on to Punta Mess. Punta Mess, Punta Mess is like a little bit darker than some of the others. It's like they put, it's almost like they put Campari in it already. It's got a pretty complex nose. It doesn't smell as sweet on the nose. It smells. Um, a little bit bitter, maybe. Much drier, much drier finish. Um, not like super bitter, not super bitter like, um, you know, like Campari or, or Fernet or something like that, but it's like, like a light, like a very dry finish. Um, it doesn't feel like, I'm sure there's a lot of sugar in this, but it doesn't feel like it's going to really sweeten up a drink very much. Like an herbal dry finish. Hmm. I mean, delicious, pretty interesting. Let's compare to Dopo Teatro. This has got a very spicy nose. Herbal is not a very good descriptor, but like like a, like a spicy mountain herb, like a, um, I don't know, like, like not oregano, oregano maybe? Yeah, maybe, I don't know, something like a pepper, like a peppery nose. Not as dry as Punta Mess. Like a little bit of like a vanilla. Mm. Um, I, I think it's made from the Coqui Torino with added things in it, so I'm expecting sort of a chocolate note, but I don't get a lot of that chocolate. So it's, it's very flowery. It's very it's a little bit more perfumey, but not as dry. It's like a very interesting, more herbal mm. sweet vermouth, but not a soup, not not very much more bitter. A little bit though. It's it's a little bit more dry than the Coqui Torino, but not as dry as the Punta Mess. All right. I think we figured it out. Let's move on and make these red hooks. Uh, I'm gonna use Old Forester Rye, my new favorite, and I think I might just go ahead and use my Maraschino blend that I made uh, in the last video. 
Um, that's a blend of Luxardo and Marasca Maraschinos. That should work fine. And why not? There's no rules. Let's go to the montage. All right, we did it. Let's start with the Punta Mess version uh, of the Red Hook. Normally this would get a cherry garnish. I'm just about out of cherry, so I decided to skip it for this. Strongly rye on the nose. It's very heavily rye, but you get a bitterness that comes through sort of in the bottom. It's maybe a little bit dry for me. A lot of the recipes you'll find online will call for between a quarter and a half ounce of maraschino, depending on your preferences. I originally thought my preference would be for it to be a little sweeter, uh, so I was gonna put in a half ounce, but then I thought, for, I'm trying to compare vermouths here, so maybe I'll I'll do the quarter ounce of, of uh, maraschino just so I can taste the vermouth better. But I think if I made this again just to drink, I would probably put in a half ounce of maraschino. FYI. All right, let's go on to Dopo Teatro. You get just a very slight hint of the maraschino on the nose. In both of these, I don't miss the Angostura at all. The, the, the mm. vermouths have this sort of bitterness mm. that is fulfilling yeah. the role of the, of the bitters in the drink. So pretty good. But again, for me, I'd probably make this a little bit more uh, sweet with a little extra maraschino, but this is lovely. Obviously these two vermouths have like slightly different flavors, but I'd say both of these work pretty well. Now, long ago when I first heard about the Red Hook, I also heard about the Meat Hook, which I learned today was created in a bar in Vancouver called Laboratoire. Now for the Meat Hook, what you do is you add a half an ounce of smoky scotch to the mix. I'm gonna use Ardbeg 5 Wee Beastie. The recipe on Cocktail Virgin calls for Wild Turkey 101 rye, which I actually do have on hand. So I'm gonna use that. Uh, and you know what? One montage, probably enough for this video. Let's just, let's cut straight to the drink. Never tried this one before. I'm pretty excited. Oh, by the way, uh, I had one cherry left, so I put it on this um, this drink. I didn't put any cherries on the other one. They would normally get a cherry garnish, but I ran out of cherries. Um, my last cherry is going on this meat hook. That is bold. It is boldly smoky, mm. but the rye and the smoky scotch go really well together. Wow. This is two and a half ounces of whiskey and an ounce of vermouth, but uh, it, it balances out pretty well. Um, I went ahead and put half an ounce of maraschino in this because I knew it would be not sweet enough for me otherwise. And that's really nice. I think some of the recipes I've seen online call for less maraschino, but you know what? No rules. I'm gonna make this drink the way I think I will like it. In fact, I'm not even really detecting the maraschino so much. The smoky scotch is pretty, pretty dominating. Mm, so interesting. It's very, it's definitely sweet mm. enough for me. It's, but it's a, you know, a boozy, dry, herbaceous, and smoky. Wow, that's some, that is an excellent drink. Okay, two Manhattan variations for the price of one today. All right, so 
hopefully you found that entertaining and or informative. Uh, I do have three bottles of Sweet Vermouth open now, so let me know down in the comments your favorite Manhattan variations, your favorite uses for Sweet Vermouth. And in the meantime, thanks for watching and we will see you next time.